Let's now turn to using enthalpy to predict the heat transferred at constant pressure for chemical reactions. Consider the generalized reaction where we have some reactants that turn into products. Recall that enthalpy is a state function, which means that it's path independent. That means that the change in enthalpy can be either be determined directly or indirectly. In order to ensure that when performing these types of calculations that conditions are all the same, it is necessary to define something called the standard state. This is the pure substance at exactly one bar of pressure. Some notes to keep in mind include the temperature is not a part of this definition. It can be defined for any temperature. The phase must also be specified. It can be defined for unphysical phases or conditions. And the standard state is denoted with an O and a horizontal line through it. Since the system is at constant pressure, the sign of delta H will define exothermic and endothermic processes. The standard state at a given, potentially unphysical temperature, can be modified by the heat capacity, as will be seen later. The change in enthalpy for a reaction in the standard state can be calculated as the weighted sum of the standard molar enthalpies of the products minus a weighted sum of the standard molar enthalpies of the reactants. One would then combine all the relevant reactions to give an overall reaction enthalpy. Nu is a weight on each term, which is based on stoichiometric coefficients of the balanced chemical equation. This equation is summarized as Hess's law, which is defined as the standard enthalpy of a reaction is the sum of the standard enthalpies of the reactions into which the overall reaction may be divided. This is simply a statement that enthalpy is a state function, and that any path can be chosen to find the solution. Keep in mind that the difference in the weighted sum of the products and the reactants will appear whenever we discuss thermodynamic state functions in this course. This is now going to be an example of the application of Hess's law for a chemical reaction. So what we're given here is the thermo three thermochemical equations, but really what the problem is asking is to calculate the standard enthalpy of the combustion of propene, where propene is C386. And so if I were to write down this balanced chemical equation, it would be C3H6 as a gas, plus O2 as a gas, and that then leads me to carbon dioxide and water. And if I balance this chemical equation, I have three carbons on the left-hand side, so I have to have three on the right-hand side. I also have six hydrogens on the left-hand side, so that means I have to have six on the right-hand side. That means on the right-hand side I now have six nine um, oxygen molecules, so I have to have nine halves oxygen, sorry, nine atoms of oxygen on the right-hand side, which means I have to have nine halves oxygen molecules on the left-hand side. Now for this demonstration of Hess's law, I'm going to draw two diagrams where my first diagram is just going to be a direct measurement of this overall chemical reaction, where because it's combustion, I'm going to assume that it's going to be an exothermic reaction, that heat is transferred outside of the system. And so basically I have two different positions. I have when I have my propene and my oxygen. And in the final case, I'm going to have my carbon dioxide plus my water. In this case, I'll write this with a red arrow. And I'm going to have my delta H for this reaction. Now, of course, I don't have this information. I don't know this delta H, or I can't. I don't know this direct pathway or information regarding this direct pathway. And so what, can I, what I can instead calculate is this alternative pathway using these other three thermochemical equations that I already know the, change in, the standard change in enthalpy for. So what I'm going to start with is my propene. And then in this case, I'm going to write a couple of extra things in. And the reason why is that I will account for them later, or I will reproduce them later. But the main point is that I want to maintain, and maybe I'll write them into a different color, but I want to maintain that I have basically the exact same chemical reaction going on, even though I'm going to have other things happening around it. So I still have my C386, and I still have my 9 halves O2, but now I'm going to write in a mole of hydrogen and half a mole of oxygen. And what I know is that I can take that, that mole of hydrogen, 
and that I can convert my propene into propane, which is what this first thermochemical reaction tells me I can do. And if I do that, then what I gain is, or sorry, the system loses 124 kilojoules per mole, which is what basically this thermochemical reaction is telling us. And what I have at this level is C3H8 plus 9 halves O2 plus, and then I have my 1 half O2 again. And I'll write my C3H8 actually in green to sort of denote that it is not part of the overall reaction that I have. The second piece of information, or the second reaction, is basically the combustion of the propene. And so what happens is that when I combust the propene, I end up, again, losing about 2,220 kilojoules per mole. And I turn my C3H8 and five oxygens into three carbon dioxides and four waters. Well, here on this line, I have five oxygens. So that means then I can take my C3H8 and my five oxygens, and what I convert that into is, using the blue I get three carbon dioxides, and I get four waters. Now of course, the balanced chemical reaction is only looking for three waters. And so that's where this final piece of information comes in, or this final reaction where I can take one of those waters and break it back up into hydrogen and oxygen. And so now I'm going to be back at the same level that I was at before. I'm going to be giving back 286 kilojoules per mole from what the system gave off. So the system's going to regain 286. And it basically is going to convert one of those waters into that mole of hydrogen and that one half mole of oxygen. And so in this case, I've still gone from C3H6 plus 9 halves O2 gives me three CO2s and three waters, but I've just done it in this different pathway where I had the information available to me that I can know or calculate explicitly this pathway, and that I still get to the exact same spot. So if I were to calculate the change in enthalpy for this system, then all that is is just the change in enthalpy in the first reaction plus the change in enthalpy in the second reaction plus the change in enthalpy of the third reaction. And so in that case, that's just going to be minus 124 plus minus 200 or 2,220 plus 286. And what that leaves me with is negative 2,058 kilojoules per mole. And so again, the take-home message from this is that Hess's law is just basically a description of enthalpy being a state function, being that we can either calculate this thing directly, which is what this first diagram is meant to show, that I'm just going to do a direct calculation of this combustion reaction, or I can calculate it indirectly, which is what I showed over here in blue on the right, where either method is the same, and because enthalpy is path independent, then I still come to the exact same answer in the end.